Our great friends here, um, Frederick uh, Mujuru and uh, Samuel Mujuru, are from the Shona ethnic group uh, in Zimbabwe. And they play this ancient spiritual instrument, uh, you know, this instrument is uh, with the Shona culture several thousands of years. Okay? Several thousands of years that uh, they, they, they've been using this instrument for their rituals and for. Uh, the life cycle events, you know, all kinds of uh, ceremonies in their culture. And we are honored that uh, they are on top here in the U.S. Of course, they tour all over the world, so they are in great demand, and we were able to pull them for a few days uh, to bring them to U of M. So we are honored to have them here. Uh, they've been to several classes. We were here in the morning. We went to the Britain or Brighton to that day. And uh, in addition to uh, being masters of this instrument, also, they are also being the instrument themselves too. They are well known for making some of the best in Europe, in Zimbabwe. And so a lot of people will buy um, uh, instruments from them from all over the world too. They taught Europe here, places in Africa. So what we are going to do in this workshop, and I don't have the key, we shall play by here and go along. Uh, as we go about I'm going to come then probably play a piece for us to relax us and we may you know some of us may go into a meditative mood but play a piece first and then uh, they will move on uh, to now interact and do all kinds that's why we have extra instruments they have extra beer here for us to try they have their this uh rest of the whole show we don't have whole show so we are ready I uh, use uh, or any potion, any matter that we can play around on. So uh, this will be fun. Okay. Um, the last thing is the the way these things are in Africa. They come from generations, several, several, several generations of in in Bela players in, uh, in in among the Shona. So it, uh, they didn't just start with them. It starts with their great great great, great grandfathers and also their ancestors. Okay, so it's a long generation that maybe we can tell you about that. We want to hear music. You know, somebody says that's music about music. Let's not talk about music, but music about music. So thank you very much. Let's thank you. Thank you.
can get properly because there's no resonance. But you can yeah. go straight how we play. Now, um, the Ndira, as, uh, as, as, I, as I said, it has got 20, this one has got 24 keys, and it's a typical uh, Shona Ndira, and it's called Ndira Zawadzimu. It is a Ndira as an instrument, but it is called Ndira Zawadzimu. There, is, there are several other types of Ndira in Zimbabwe that are used according to the region. There is what's called the Jai. And there's also a small one called ka Karimba, which has only 15 keys. And the Njari type of mirror has got uh, anything between uh, 35 and 52 keys. And this one is played by another ethnic tribe in the northern part of the country. But generally, uh, this Mirazawa Zimu is the main instrument, the main leader that is used by the majority of the people. So we use the instrument to communicate with ancestors. And we also uh, uh, use the instrument to play at weddings. We use the instrument to just to hang out with, with some other people you know, during the weekends, just to have fun. And um, the people who play the mbira, it's not that, uh, I mean, when we go to, to Zimbabwe, like in our family, you know, like the professor has just mentioned that our family has got a long, long history uh, with the instrument, with the instrument, uh, because of the uh, traditional connection that we have had through all these all these centuries, maybe more than a thousand or so years. For this instrument has got um, a history on its own. Uh, so much that archaeologists discovered an Mbira at Great Zimbabwe um, that they dated to be 1,100 years. Uh, even right now, we have another instrument that is it's so, so old. It is about 200 or so years. It's still back home. And it has been given from one generation to the other within the family. And that's the oldest instrument that we have. And so another issue is about uh, who plays the mirror. Anyone can play the mirror in the family, be it girls, women, or men. But just like anything else, people, uh, they choose to become uh, competent mirror players. In our setup, we have, like I said, we communicate with the ancestors. And there are ceremonies that we perform, um, like the birth of a child, like if a spirit wants to come, we have uh, those spirits, uh, we have spirits, the ancestral spirits who come to possess, and when, during that course of possession, we play the mirror to communicate with them if we need to have guidance from them. And so we use the instrument. So during that course of communicating with the ancestors, we have a ceremony that uh, also comes with the occasion. And so um, that is when um, even children, even everybody else joins to dance. Those that want to dance, those that want that will play, will be playing. But then it's only accomplished mirror players who play for the ancestral spirits. Um, it's all because they, the ancestral spirits, will only listen or want to come when there is uh, the real sounds that they want to hear. But then 
other people can join in and just dance. So that is also how we learn how to play them here. Uh, like as children, we would uh, get in the, in the place where we would play, dance to the music, and that music was immersed in us as children. And so we would imitate how we heard the, the, the sounds of the mirror. And then, when the time comes, what we want to pick up the mirror and learn, then ask somebody who plays to show you, and it becomes easier. And that's basically how we learned how to play the mirror. And um, before we go any further, is there anyone with a question? No. Yes. Can you just like on the mirrors themselves and then on the resin shell you have bottle caps or like little rattling things? Have those always those very traditional or always been there? Yeah, they've always been there. Firstly, uh, the mirror goes with as, as we were demonstrating, you you could hear that on its own it doesn't resonate well. But if you put in, in a resonator, then the sound amplifies. And so uh, traditionally we use the god, the natural god that we grow, it's a large pumpkin that we grow in the, in the fields. And it is treated by boiling it in, in water and then we put it in the sun to dry. And then, uh, originally, people used sh uh, snail shells. You know, they are well shaped, round, and then drill holes and then tie them with string to make this sound. And the, the sound, this uh, rattling sound, is traditional. It, it goes with basically all the music. Now, uh, with this, uh, uh, this, uh, this is synthetic fiber. Uh, we use the synthetic fiber fiber dust uh, when we're traveling. You know, you, you cannot use the, the gold. You, know, you cannot travel with the gold because it can easily break. So this one is comes in handy. And we also use you know, these bottle tops for lighting. And does that answer the question? Yes. Does somebody have a question? So in other ways, I quickly, I would say simply quickly, rattling is part of the sound too, right? The resultant sound, right? It's part of it too. So uh, unlike the piano, the, the piano here right now, if we, if we strike the key, we get the, the clean tone, of course, there are some vibrations going on there, right? But we have this. Okay, for them also, in order to get the, that mass of sound that they are looking for, they are not looking for the clean pitch, but the mass of sound. And the rattle, uh, providing that bass also, you, you remember he says, this is the reason that they play to invite spirits of the ancestors to come and possess human beings so that they can consult with them about problems in the family, problems in the community and all that, right? So this is a ritual music too. So in order, in order for it to sound a little bit mythical and all those things, they have there. So yes, the rattling is a traditional, except that in the modern world we have bottle, Coca-Cola, bottle cups and all that, but traditionally they will use seed, traditional seed and all that, right? <coughs> good, good. Well, who else? Who else? Okay, we also have, we also use uh, rattles. Okay. Now, with and beer, uh, the, these rattles add on to the rattling sound from the, from the buzzers. And we are going to demonstrate to you how this goes with the, with the mirror. How do you call the rattle? Sorry? Oh, oh, sure. Oh, oh, sure. They know the rattle? Yeah, the Shona word of rattles is Horsho. Horsho. Let's all say Horsho. 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 <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's how it goes. <laughs> so, um, the records also give us the beat. This is like, um, <laughs>
patriotic music. Anyone can join in the dance. They can join in, clapping hands, like this. Our father was a great player. 
He was a very good player. I mean, one of the best players in the village. And so they had several really, really good players. And then when this generation passed on, you know, we are now those that play here for the ancestors. And we didn't know that we will uh, at one time be uh, this good because we will just enjoy our music, just enjoy the music and participate. And so the learning process is such that we can have a, a number of children, say even 10 in one generation. But then sometimes you can only have two or three. That can be really, really good leader players. So people choose to do something else and then they eventually uh, drop out of it. But they'll be, they, they, can, they can play, but not as collectively as is required. So, yeah, all the uh, composers that we play have been, uh, uh, have, have been, uh, I mean, are ah, these old, old tunes that have always been played over the, all these generations. And so we learn from our parents, they learn from their parents, it goes on and on, on like that. And all, all of those uh, uh, composers that we will play for you tonight are old, old tunes that have been. Uh, passed on from generation to generation. Is that okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how much of the music is pre-composed and how much of it is it improvisation? Or the, or the dance is part of the improvisation, I assume, but maybe not, I don't know. Oh, all the compositions are pre-composed. Okay. They, they've been, like I said, they've been played by, uh, this song can be as old as, oh, uh, maybe, I don't know. It's, yeah. I don't even know. No, it's, it's all. And uh, it, the reason is because it is played for the ancestral spirit. And we have to play the music that they used to hear okay. when they were still alive. And, and hence, for it to be kept as it is. And so we have to, each time we need to communicate with them, we have to play the same compositions. Okay. One of the ways I can know whether something is pre-composed, like the names too, if they say this song is called X, mm -hmm. then you know it's already there because if they it's song X, they are not going to play song Y in place of X, right? Yeah. And sometimes also the songs what we use in a particular situation, okay, for instance, some of the spirits are, are aligned with certain songs too. When they come, they have their favorites and they say, the spirit will say, play that song for me, I want to hear and they've been dance for two hours and you keep playing because it does their favorite. So, so it must be. But there's always room, as the way the African approach to music is, there's always room for improvisation, which means then you have to follow certain rules, right? You don't just take over. There will be some rules guiding your improv within that, uh, that, that improv. Okay. For we to play these old songs, is that uh, since we play for the spirits, so sometimes now we have got a problem, we want to hear from, from the spirits. Now, if we play the wrong tunes, the different tunes, that spirit cannot come because it's not the way they want. So we have to play those original songs so that we can hear what we want to hear to the spirit, but if you don't want to hear, it means we have to we don't play the song. Good. So can we mix it with now, you know, hands-on things, you know, for us to try our hands-on, maybe some of us will later on go and write the uh, Ibra in Zimbabwe or something like that. Okay. Can we, can, you, can we begin to maybe start with a push, push or something like that? Sure. Uh, with the hands-on. Yeah, okay. So yeah. that we can have. Uh, uh, in terms of how they can right. approach this music. Okay. Now we would like to show you how to play also, and we would like, we'd like to invite you to come and join us to learn how to play also. Um, Sam, Sam, Sam will is going to start from there, showing various people, and ask you to play. Okay?
and, and also a, a Frederick also the, even the hand hamper before we move on to the bra. Because we need to they need to know where the hand is, okay. they need to know where the photo is. Okay. And uh, yeah um, so uh, yeah it's, it's, we should come come over uh, we we are once we finish the rest we know after some time we can switch over to come over grab and uh, the photo no we go ahead and you take your this original one. We don't take the original one sometimes we try because yeah take this original one we can uh, 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 let's Sam show you where the bit is. But can you put your horses, your horses down? And then we show you first by clapping hands so that you know where the bit is. And then we'll be able to show you how to play the washer because the washer also helps with the bit. Okay. So can you show the just okay. Okay, Sam is going to show you where the beat is and then you can join him and then we will take it from there. <laughs>
Yeah. Are you seeing different verses? On the... Um, all of them do that. Yeah, when you sing, is it different, like, uh, stories? Or is it different? Right. Uh, with the Bible. People do not have uh, the, 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 uh, the lyrics structure. One can be inspired with the particular occasion and sing whatever they might have come across on that particular day. And then they sing it. And the um, good thing about it is that people can see many things that social issues uh, during those um, for a particular day or a particular year, and it livens up the music. For, like, for example, uh, somebody can sing about an elder person who is greedy, who takes everything for himself in the village, and people start singing about it. And that can be happening at that particular time, and then the elder knows, oh, about me. Okay, I wanted to sing. Is that the same? Why, why, what I was singing is this. You, you know, I think it, uh, in the world, or especially what we saw in, in our in, at our home, some of the people can just see, you know, just see marry a person and leave, you know, and marry the other one and leave. And Mary, you know, that's why I'm saying, Kurora, Rora, just Mary, Mary, just, and you don't marry, you don't want to marry, you just want to, you know, what can I say? Yeah, he's not settling down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You always want to just to, to, together with the women or girls, but you don't want to marry. Mm. <laughs> when, 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 when I say, I'm not the Amaya voice, that's, I, I'm saying, it's the, the brother of your ma of your mother don't want to marry. It's just like you know, telling telling the telling my telling my relative that you, your brother the brother of your mother don't want to marry. Just want to 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 miss you know, the <laughs> girls only. <laughs> Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's, uh, that's basically what usually happens. The music, most of the music is not documented because it's for the ancestors. And if somebody wants to record the music, they can. They can create their own lyrics, they can sing and do whatever they want. But when people are at a ceremony, when doing these rituals, people sing what will be happening uh, you know, there's social issues that like you can say. So that, that's basically how it goes. You can say one thing now, and then next time I can even sing about you. <laughs> next thing I can sing about our travel from Eugene to here. You know. <laughs> so so long the voice is going to get out the tune of the song that is sung. Yeah. Maybe one more question, and then maybe we'll move on to the Mira. Uh, one more question. Yeah, I have a question. This is like this rhythm. This is a rhythm that I've just been fascinated by for a really long time, and I'm not I'm not even really sure that I understand what it is. So uh, I'm wondering if you could just sort of talk about that rhythm. I've heard it in a lot of music, um, but I guess I'm always sort of confused if I'm supposed to be hearing like or this sort of more separate. You know what I mean? That, 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 or like that, they get that, they get that, they get that. It sort of bleeds together in a way. I, mean, I guess I'm just wondering if you can talk about like right. how that rhythm should feel or how you feel it. And I don't know if that makes sense. Generally, that's how we feel it, but this would go. Oh, there, is, there isn't a pause in between. No, the.
the, their music is not very fast. Some of the families, their music, if you hear, if you one day you come to Zimbabwe, if you go to different families, some of the families, their music, their mirrors are very fast, like what can I say, borrowed or something. Even you, if you just want to, you know, to feel the music, but themselves, they are used to it. They can feel. So what I can say to you is, maybe it's correct because it, differ, it differs from you know, the, the families who play the Mbira music. Some of the Mbira, they are low. So, the, so their, their rattles also maybe go to that beat of the songs that can be played. Yeah, I would like to add on to what he is just saying. Um, it's true that some families are, they go so, so fast. And it's, um, it's so fast that we don't enjoy it, but they do. So with our mirror, this, this is called the number toko. It's a very low pitch, like a, a key in E. Almost like it can like an E, but it's not it's not very perfect, but you can only compare it. I only started comparing it because of uh, the connection with which I had with uh, some foreign friends. Because they wanted to know in what history it is in for them to identify it. And it is so low that when you are making the key, you have to make it thin. And its vibrations, it takes more time to vibrate. And the high pitched instruments, which go, go the ping, 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 and then the sound goes there, then. But this one takes, the vibration takes longer. And if you play it so fast, you won't, be, you, you won't enjoy the, the, the wholesome music that comes from it. Because when you play one note and then you quickly play the next one, that means the first note will still be ringing when you play the next one. So you won't be able to hear the. Uh, out the correct um, sound that you really want to hear. So this kind of that's what it is. So we may refer to this uh, team that we are hearing here right now as Dambo. Dambo Toko. Dambo Soko. That's the team. Mm -hmm. Dambo Soko team. It's in reference to the uh, right. Um, so um, I was answering uh, his question. Uh, I was also adding to what Sam just said. So do we still have questions? Okay, hands on. We would like you to play them there. So we can take ten, right? How many people can we have five? Okay, we've got five instruments here. Yeah. And people can... Five people can... Let's have the red five. And then the rest of us will watch. <laughs> Ba 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 ba. Again? Can I do that again? Yes. Can I hear that again? Ba 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 ba. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me fix that. Ba 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 ba. Doing good. <laughs> again. Getting excited. <laughs> okay, steady, go. Ba 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 Okay, can you play that for me? The first and second phrases. Steady, go. Good. Now the third and fourth phrases go like this. Pa 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 pa. That's the third phrase. Okay. Pa 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 pa. Okay. Are you okay with that? And the last one goes. Pa 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 pa. Okay. Let's let's do it from the top. From the first phrase to the last one. <laughs> Steady, go. Da, ba, 
Pa 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 pa. Second. Pa 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 pa. Third. Pa 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 pa. Fourth. Pa 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 pa. Now we have five little players over here. Dongi mombe muzi. Dongi mombe. Oh, my God. 
question. Any questions also for them? Any questions? Um, you, you have to Do you guys travel and tour and do this a lot? Or uh, yes, very frequently all over the world? Yes. Uh, this is basically what we do when we are traveling. Okay. And oh, we, in, in South Africa, we, we did at the uh, University of Cape Town. Down. And also, I had a residency in Johannesburg for three months in 1992. And we have traveled together to Germany and, and we stayed in Frankfurt for two weeks. You know, this is what we've been doing. And also in the US, um, all these places we've been, we've been going, like in Grinnell, at Grinnell College in Iowa. Uh, we had a residence there for what, two and a half months. Oh. One and a half months. Mm -hmm. And how about East Coast? In, oh, on the East Coast, we have done so many. <laughs> so many. I can't even recall many of them. So this is basically what we'll be doing. And then we have, uh, we, we do also concerts. We perform uh, at uh, you know, different venues. Like uh, in uh, like we're going tomorrow yeah, in we, in Portland. We'll concert tomorrow, so we will uh, finish early today for the because they leave like five a.m. Did you guys you play with people when you get there, or not? Yeah, or is it usually? Oh, okay. Well, like you have more people play, or is it? Usually no, we, we we play as just as, mm -hmm. as we are, but we always invite people from the local uh, communities mm -hmm. who were we taught how to play the the workshop. And then we play also for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just like tomorrow, we already have uh, one guy who's, uh, who's going to play for us next time. Next time we break. So, first question? Um, so, do you make these, correct? Yes, we do. So, so you look at the break. They are certain, so you come back. That's Sam so. Muju. That's him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you talk a, little bit, uh, talk a little bit about how uh, you go about tuning these and what and maybe even like a history about uh, how the tuning is this way specifically? Because these are all tuned to the same notes, so... Yes. Uh, our grandfather used to make them. And as, as young children, you remember we said, we always participated in these ceremonies. And also when he was making it with us in, in his workshop, then we would just go there, watch, and I was really amazed. I would pick up a, we call them six inch nails, and then they, they, he would put them in the, in the fire to hit them. And then he forge hammer it on an animal using a four pound hammer and shape the key uh, with the length that goes with how the pitch has to be. And then, and remember this, uh, let me show you. The six inch nail can be that long. So it can stretch when you, when you, when you, uh, when you hammer it. And then we shape them accordingly. And we use thinner uh, iron steel rods for these ones. Uh, these are 4.5 millimeters, I don't know what that means, in inches. And these ones can be anything between five and six uh, millimeters thick, and these ones can be seven or eight millimeters. And we forge hammer them. Then, um, after carving the wood from the mupa wood or mupa marupa, as we explained earlier, the blood. Did we explain that? No. The blood wood. Okay. The wood part is uh, is a indigenous type of a tree, but it's found in most parts of Africa, and we call it blood wood in English. It's a name that derives from the fact that if you cut the back, uh, a, a, a fluid that looks like blood oozes out of it. So we just call it mumba maropa. Even the Shona name uh, means mumba maropa. Ropa means blood. Mumba means uh, which oozes blood. 
and it's a hard wood, and that's the best wood that people have found to make, to use for this particular instrument. There are several types of wood that other people use, like uh, I've always prepared that one because of the history that we have had from our grandfather in the backwards. And then, uh, when we talk of how they used to make them before, or way back before the iron, uh, we have been told that they used uh, either reeds, and then they would shake the reeds according to how it has to uh, uh, according to the pitch that you want. And they also used to, to uh, uh, cut back of a, the back of a tree, dry it, and then tie those red uh, keys onto it. And that's way, 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 way back. And now, after people discovered iron, and iron was discovered many, many centuries ago, but in Africa, and they used, then they diverted from that to make metal keys. So that's how they've always been uh, working about that. And the, um, the keys, as I said, are made out of high carbon steel. We buy that from companies that manufacture those springs the spring steels, the springs made for the uh, garage springs or motorbike springs, and that the companies that treat the iron is where we get the material. And then it doesn't mean that that is as hard as a spring, because when you put it in the fire, that carbon is lessened by uh, heating, and so it will be strong enough to hold onto there but it's, it's, it's not very soft. So it, it, it gives a nice uh, sound when, when you're playing. So that's basically how it is. And it takes uh, three days to create that place to make each instrument. Three full working days. From the you know, uh, pounding of the keys, for German of the keys, the tying of the, uh, of this, tying of the, a pressure bar onto the wood and you know, making the bridge, making all these grooves and after you have cut the wood and all that stuff. So it takes about three days. Three, four days. So they are saying that uh, this one's here too. So if you want to hit the ATM or give them a check or your discover card or something, you, you, they can take it. And to tune, uh, I want to add, but on tuning, we want to tune. Do you have a hammer? First, when we're making when we're tuning, we first like we first put this one. This, it will, let's say it's this and this one. We we first tie only the frame. So now, if you want to now, uh, you see your 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 question is tuning, isn't it? Mm. Okay. Let me move, 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 move this like this one, right? Right. So it's, it's more different series. I don't I, I don't want it to be this one, isn't it? So I take this one, right? Take this plier, then I just do a little bend. To make it stronger, make it tighter. So that is, if, it, if I bring back it, 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 you know, it, it, it resists here. Right. Then, bring it back. Right. The trial and errors. <laughs> The longer it goes, then the deeper the sound, the lower the sound. But the higher not it is, the, the higher the, the sound, the pitch. Right. So this is one of the tuning. Now, 
when making, when tuning and making, it's just it's it will be I, it will be hammer it hammer uh, when I hammer just a rough like this just a roughly then when I want to to put this size right I have to fire I fire I fire on the you know, firing on the other hood firing you no know, firing like I fire I just fire under Firing and just if it is, it's not. I remove it. I remove it until it's, it is the tube. Then I go to this. I go to this. To this, right? Then I go to the top keys. Then I go to the last keys. Then I, I, fi I finalize. This is how I make. <coughs> So, um, it's exciting when I see percussion students singing. You know? yeah. So, if, if you, uh, isn't that amazing? So, if you say, uh, you want to define the percussion in maybe Shona or in some African cultures, percussion is someone who sings, right? And then the whole can be just of someone who plays percussion. Right? <laughs> so isn't it interesting how uh, uh, cultures around the world they conceptualize all these terms that we take for granted we use in you know, percussion. So percussion is someone who plays. But don't, don't talk, don't dance, don't do anything, right? Don't sing. But here we are, uh, we confronting a tradition and then we find ourselves singing. And we find ourselves maybe clapping our hands and maybe dancing. So the, the whole idea is that in different cultures, the way they approach it. So if you are a percussionist in this culture, you must sing. Also, so I'm here to sing, see you sing in your uh, concert, in your percussion concert, you know, <laughs> singing like a choir. So we are percussionists singing. Because like I can see, I haven't seen my friend here from India before, but uh, and I, 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 I'm sure Dan will be working with you on the tablet and all those things. And, you know the, the tabla players in India, all those rhythms, they sing because if you can sing it very well, then you can you realize it, right? So let's not forget that, that if you can sing. Then also for those who uh, do uh, oral traditions like us and my colleagues in the Pascal tradition, oh, you know, they don't have to play, you know, music all the time they say those things. I always laugh when they, where is the music, where is your music? Uh, where is your music here in your bag? You know, I always laugh when uh, somebody would say, uh, yes, <laughs> you know, somebody says, oh yeah, I think this is music, right? You know, in, in our culture is music, right? But, so these people for they are going to play the concert, right? They're going to play the concert, and then they get to the, Stage and then somebody say, "Where is your music?" <laughs> you see that he's laughing, right? Where is your music? Because he had the symphony rehearsing. Did you all have your music? Yes, we have music, right? Mm -hmm. It's true. That, that's how we conceptualize music, right? And that music must be maybe that. Idea. But for some other people in the world, that idea is different. Uh, I say this all the time because I, I came to the West here to study to do graduate graduate studies in music and what I've read about African music, you know, in all those things. I've read so many books and people saying all kinds of things, right? So because they don't have this, so it's primitive, okay? And then people use maybe the classical music and so that's the highest civilization. That's not good. That approach is not good because we have to understand how cultures approach, you know, company. and each one is good and each one has got downside and upside, every single one, including this or our one, has got the downside, everything. So this is just for your, your say, hey, but they don't have notation. What is this? Okay, of course, we, they wrote this for you, but when they sing, when they sing, when they sing to the little kid to teach them how to play, that's the notation. There's a notation, but it's not written. That's all that it is. 
There's composition, but it's not written. Right? So there's notation. And if you think about it then, because then this is closely tied to the, the music, okay? As you sing, don't give boom, in boom, z. Uh, the phrase, even the end of phrases, the end, the beginning, the end of phrases, I was hearing the end of phrases, and you, you could hear how one phrase ends there, the other one ends here. But they all are there. Everything is there. Melody is there. Rhythm is there. Okay, so uh, uh, where is your music? Okay. So, so it is a, a great lesson. A, and uh, we uh, appreciate it. It's, it's good that uh, for in the classical world, percussion people don't have problem encountering different world music. Okay, but you have to go through the corridor and go to maybe uh, some places and you know. It's, it's, the reason why I'm saying that is that when I came here, I said let's bring rattles. Okay, and then all of a sudden we brought rattles from all over the world. Percussion people don't have problems with that, dealing with the world. But I have colleagues, you know, somebody plays trumpet and there's a problem because he, you know, and somebody plays that instrument or somebody plays that and there's that because they haven't encountered, they haven't even tried to encounter another culture or deal with uh, something different or something like that. But for percussion we do it, I mean, it's all about the place here, all about we have instruments from all over the world, so it's easy for us to, uh, somebody will say you are preaching to the choir here. But I have reasons for saying that because of my own colleagues everywhere. I mean, in this uh, small community here, music theorists are not talking with musicologists. Okay, you know that? Musicologists are, will not be talking with uh, the film studio because people hold on to certain things that it's not good. But if you want to be well around, if you want to uh, be here with somebody around the world, if we all want to communicate with each other in the world, then we should learn a little bit about each other. So I understand my friend is here to study classical music. Is that right? Yeah. You know, why, why not? If he goes this way, why can't he go that way? If he goes that way, why can't he go that way? Right? So he's here, he plays his instrument, but he's traveled from India to here to study classical music. There's nothing wrong. Some people say, oh, you Africans, you are leaving your, your culture and, and studying another. No, because cultures always interact. They interact, and music is the best way, you know. Some people think it's, you know, smart bomb can save the world, smart bomb can't, dumb bomb, the smart bombs are dumb. Music. Right, that music can bring the whole world together. It's not smart bombs because the smart bombs are down. <laughs> All right. So thank you very much. Let's thank our. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I want to add to what Professor is just saying about singing. In Shona, we say, if you can talk. You can sing. If you can walk, you can dance. Just have to let you know that. Thank you.